Hello everyone and welcome back to another album review. In this video I'm going to review The Glam by Park Jia. This is an album that was released the previous month and I was looking forward to this release but I didn't end up getting to it up until recently. Now this is the third full length album of Korean multi-instrumentalist Park Jiha. And a brand new release on the label Glitterbeat Records which mostly focuses on ethnic and world material all around the world. And I've already covered a few of the releases out of this label in my opinion they release some pretty cool stuff. Now the debut album of Park Jiha Communion actually got a bit of attention, it gained a bit of a popularity. It was possibly one of the most well-known albums the label put out at the moment and I remember just seeing people talking about it. Now I don't remember a lot about this album because it's been a long time since I've listened to this particular one but I remember feeling that it's an interesting album in terms of Korean traditional music but not to a point where I would say there was something really all that spectacular or special about it. Now getting into Glim, the very first thing that caught my attention was the intriguing album cover. My initial question looking at this for the first time was, is this really an instrument? And if that's indeed an instrument, then that's so cool looking. Now the album by itself I'd say that at some points it was somewhat what I expected but there were a few occasions and the way it was actually executed and the approaches that it took with its sound that actually kinda caught me a bit off guard because there is something somewhat unsettling about this album. The minimal approach in many of the songs and the lack of variety to them in terms of the instruments and the sounds and the way they're placed together actually sort of gave me a sense of isolation. It is a bit of a dark album and the way it approaches all of its soundscapes and I feel that this is the most intriguing part about this album, making you feel like you're actually into this dark room all by yourself, just listening to it and letting your mind flow and let music travel you but instead of creating many different images, it just feels blank. It just feels like you're staring in darkness, in abyss, like there's nothing there. And I feel that this sense of dread and isolation is something that really makes this release in particular so intriguing. That's at least the way I felt when I've listened to this album. And I think it has to do with the way it approaches and structures the songs. I mean, just by the very first song at dawn, you actually get this really bizarre experimental and avant-garde piece that has these huge portions of silence to it. but any of the sounds over here are actually somewhat off-putting and unsettling to listen to because like the song starts with all of those high frequencies which I know that for me it's not really a big deal, I like high frequencies but if you're not familiar with sounds like this, this is going to immediately turn you off, like this is a turn off right from the beginning. It's actually a really bizarre introduction, like starting your album like this, this can definitely throw a lot of people off and when it comes to the second half you have all of those sounds that are actually extremely like ridiculously loud and there's not like a real sense of structure over here and all of this just makes this track sound quite off-putting and I feel that this by itself really creates a really intriguing atmosphere right from the get-go which is obviously not easy to get into but even for me by itself I wouldn't say that this is one of the strongest moments the album has to offer even though I can give it to this track that it's quite unique and it's unexpected. I think that the lack of structure is what doesn't make this one of the best moments in the album and we don't really get another moment that sounds as experimental as this. For the most part the rest of the album just contains some post-minimalist moments and I think that the album benefits from that. In cases like this is where in my opinion the album shows its true colors and it's at moments like this where the album is not just simply intriguing but it's also captivating. This is what happens in my opinion with the track Sunrise, a song of two humans, one of the most beautiful moments over here. The main structure and the melodies on this track in particular sound pretty fascinating and I like the main idea behind it. Now this is not something that goes for the entirety of the song though, towards the second half we actually get more of like free improvised elements, not really having a specific structure to it rather than just putting many different melodies together. But I still believe that 
it doesn't really feel that much all over the place and I think that it benefits with the minimalism it provided at the beginning so the final portion of this track ends up feeling kinda compelling for what it offered. At this point we would also see the album getting slightly more varied as it would also focus on avant folk elements and string sections which in my opinion really manages to add up to the experience. The album keeps on with the experimentation and it enforces even further its unsettling nature that I mentioned previously. This happens with the track's light way and the way of spiritual breath which in my opinion are actually two of the moments that manage to capture the best this more of a transitional sense with the music but we also constantly have in the background those high frequency noises that feel like there is someone pulling their nails into a chalkboard it's some of those quite unsettling sounds that if you're not familiar with or if you have a trouble with them they can easily throw you off though in the case of those two songs i wouldn't say they ever become distracting but they certainly leave an impression on you the track a day in in my opinion combines beautifully string sections and horn sections making for definitely one of the most compelling moments in the album. One of the highlights for me, if not the best moment of the album, has to be the track Restlessly Towards. This is where in my opinion the album achieves on creating this sense of dread and isolation with such a beautiful and minimal melody. There is not really that much in terms of what this track does with its structure and the way it's paced. However, it is captivating and I like that it keeps going on with this melody that is so beautiful and nice to listen to. So this is where the album for me really manages to shine and showing some of its biggest strengths. I'd say that the album doesn't really end in its strongest note though as the track Nightfall Dancer for example I wouldn't really say that it manages to have something all that captivating about it. It doesn't even manage that much to be an experimental song. It's not like there's something all that much out there about it. It's a kind of standard song that didn't really manage to be all that memorable in my opinion. And there's finally the track Temporary Interior which I think that the track is a bit lengthier than what I would prefer to. I like some of the change-ups it has in a few occasions so it doesn't really stay the same thing and I'd say that it has some okay minimal elements to it but for the most part I'd say that it's another one of the tracks that I can't really say it was that much memorable. With that being said I feel that this album has a lot to offer. I know that this might not be for everyone because some of the sounds over here are not really that easy to digest. And even if for the most part we're talking about a pretty minimal album, the structure and the pacing is not really all that easy to follow at times. But I can't help but feel that there is something really special about this release. It's the way it makes you feel. As I'd say, it extends beyond just being a traditional Korean music release. There is something more to it, which can't be for everyone. And even I would say it's not always that consistently great with its experience experimentations but I still find that this album is pretty intriguing and it is at least worth giving it a shot. I'm gonna give the Gleam a 7 plus out of 10. What's your opinion on this album? Like it, dislike it, why and what do you want me to review next time? Let me know down in the comments. If you like if you enjoyed the video subscribe for more content like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye.